Mrs. Coulter was not inclined to let go of any possession, especially so valuable a treasure as this little girl. Lyra was pursued and would have been caught. But help arrived from an unlikely source. Egyptians. Her new friends would not only protect her from the long arm of Mrs. Coulter, but welcome her as family. Marcosta. And so it was, during her meeting with John Farr and Father Coram, that Lyra first attempted to read the alethiometer. The Master of Jordan gave me this. It's an alethiometer. You got three hands you can control. By pointing at three symbols, you can ask any sort of question you can imagine. Once you've got your question framed, this other needle points to more symbols that give you the answer. Can I try? What are you doing, Lyra? You don't know how to read it. Half pan. A difficult task at best. A fool's errand without decades of practice and a host of manuals. Lyra performed the impossible without a moment's doubt. Happens to everyone first time out of water. As soon as you're feeling well enough, Father Coram would like to speak with you. He's in the meeting room below decks. Father Coram should be in the meeting room at the fore of the ship. Hello there, Lyra. 
Are you feeling better? A little, thanks. Have you had much opportunity to practice with the alethiometer yet? I'm trying, but it's hard to figure out what all the symbols mean. That's the trick, isn't it? Even with a gift like yours, it could still take a lifetime to understand all the meanings. Do you know any of them? Only a few. Take the hourglass, for example. Its first meaning is obvious. Time. But it also has a second, deeper meaning. Death. That's not too hard. Not all of them are so straightforward, though. What do you think the apple means? Knowledge. I already learned that one. Yes. But it has another meaning as well. Sin. Okay. That makes sense. When you see a symbol, understand the context and associate the symbol with the meaning. Try it now with this apple. So, if I see something that matches the symbol from the alethiometer, I might be able to understand a new meaning. Precisely. There may only be 36 symbols, but for all we know, their meanings are limitless. You're bound to uncover new meanings all the time. And the more you understand, the easier it will be to read the alethiometer. If I can never focus for more than a few minutes without getting sick. <laughs> yes, of course. Why don't you go back to the deck and speak with Jay? I think he'll have just the thing to help you get your sea legs.
pot of corn said you might have something to make me feel better. Ha <laughs> ha. Just a thing, in fact. Swab on the deck. I was hoping it was more like some medicine. That's the best medicine there is. Nothing gets your sea legs under you faster than a little hard work. Oh, boy. Head to the rear deck. You have to go up the ladder over the engine room. You'll find a mob back there. Sounds a bit fishy to me. And while you're busy with that, you might ask some of the others if they need any help. There's never a shortage of tasks to be done on board a ship. but you have to promise not to say anything. Sure. See, me and dear Nero was exploring since we never been on a ship this big before. But, but, but she got tangled in the rigging and now can't get down. And you can't leave because she's up there. She's got to come down sometime, but we've already been here going on an hour. Pan and I could help you, couldn't we? Of course. I certainly wouldn't like to be stuck up there. Really? I sure appreciate this, you two. This isn't so bad. Certainly is a far cry from the luxury of Mrs. Coulter's flat. I'd swab a thousand decks with my tongue before I'd go back to that awful place.
Hold on, Lyra. We can't go up there yet. I know we need to rescue Deanira, but my fur would smell like smoke for days. Maybe we could convince someone to close this one off. Just for a little while. Maybe Bram could pass a message to the engine room. That sailor on the front deck. He didn't seem very friendly. But we could try. You know, Lyra, even though no Egyptian would dare turn you in, there are plenty of folks out there who'd gladly take the oblation board's reward money. You don't need to tell me twice. I've had enough of being kidnapped for one lifetime. The best way for you to go unnoticed in the north is for you to pass as Egyptian child. Most folks don't give us a second glance. So, should I borrow some clothes, or...? Being an Egyptian ain't all about the way you dress. Now, I notice you've been picking up our way of speech on your own. But you're gonna have to think on your feet if anyone talks to you. I've heard you're a fair hand at fooling people already, though. Well, Mark Costa did say I was deceptive. <laughs> She paid you quite a compliment then. Come on, let's see you in action. Pretend I'm a landloper inquiring into your business. I should take them fast. The Magisterium won't recognise me if I'm with you guys, right? They'll think I'm Egyptian. Not if you keep up like last time. Let's try again. Greet me like Egyptian would. That's never our funds, is it? Good to see you, old son. Well done, young lady. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you were one of Ryan Van Dien's children.
Um, I was supposed to ask if you can ask the engine room to stop the smoke in the rear stack for a little while. <laughs> now, why on earth would I do that? I, well, I'm supposed to do something, so I need you to turn the smokestack off so I can do it. Well, that doesn't sound like something I'm going to do. And anyway, then what? You planning on climbing the stack? I only have to go up a little and I'll have the grill to hold on to. I'll be low enough that I won't get hurt even if I do fall. All right. I'll pass the message along to the engine room, but promise me you'll be careful up there now. You're too ill to stand. Now you're pretending you're in the circus. Quiet, you. I'm concentrating. any better? It's definitely helping, but my head still hurts. I guess I could do something else.
Thanks a lot, you guys. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. I'm sure Dianir has learned her lesson as well. We're happy to help. Speak for yourself. I'll be pulling rope out of my teeth for days. Ness, is there anything you're doing I can help you with? No, but I bet there's something I can help you with. After your running with the gobblers and landing, I thought you could use a few lessons on self-defense. Ooh, like karate? I've always wanted to learn that. <laughs> Not exactly. More along the lines of how to avoid people trying to collect the GOB's reward. You ready to do a little sparring? I need something. Fast. Whoa! I can barely... <laughs> Trying to help. <laughs> ah, nicely done. And come here, you. Whoa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm too shabby, Lara. Now come talk to me again if you feel you need more practice. And if you want Pantalaemon to learn as well, Adamo here will be happy to help.
Good work, Ben. Lyra might be able to learn a thing or two from you. Finally, somebody else recognizes that. How's that? My stomach's still a bit off. But it's not as bad as it was. One more task ought to do it. Getting on here, Lyra. Just fine, thanks. Pan likes the sea a lot. Well, carefully, he doesn't like it too much. Or he may end up settling as a dolphin or some such. And then you're never going to see dry land again. No. That can't really happen, can it? Ha <laughs> ha. No, I'm just having you on. Uh, it's happened to a sailor or two, but you ain't tidy enough to the sea to worry about it. Jerry was right. I do feel better. That's good. For both of us. Let's go see what Father Coram wanted us to do. Lyra, it looks like Jerry's medicine did the trick. I feel much better, thank you. Do you think you could read the alethiometer now? I think so. What do you want me to ask? As you know, Lyra, your disappearance caused quite a stir back in London. The authorities are looking all over for you, but we've taken it upon ourselves to keep you safe. In order to do that, we need to know what Mrs. Coulter is planning. Okay. I'll try and figure it out.
understand the answer. There are so many symbols. I think it's trying to tell me danger is approaching. I'm sorry, but I just don't know, Lyra. Maybe one of the other sailors can help you. No sweat. <laughs> Why do demons have to settle at all? Well, your demon's a part of you. And when you're young, you want to be a million different things. Get a bit older and you start focusing on the things you love most. 
and your demon follows suit. But I want Pan to be able to change forever. I remember feeling like that when I was a boy. But there's something nice about it when your demon settles. It lets you know a lot about yourself somehow. Is there a way to stop your demon from settling? There's no going back. Ha! I once met a man who claimed to have an elixir that could make your demon change again. <laughs> Sold it to half the port he did. But of course it didn't work. Folks were, well, pretty upset about that. <laughs> I don't care what Lord Fa and Fa Decorum say. A rescue mission ain't no place for a little girl. Well, I'm certainly glad to be finished up there. That was more than enough excitement for one day. It's not fair. I just got used to being on a ship and now I'm stuck in my room. Don't worry. It probably won't be long before we get to Trollers and anyway. 